This is your host, Doggett, and welcome to For the Fans, The Road to Snyder Cut. Uh, with me today, I got some special friends. Uh, I got with me um, a returning guest. Uh, you know him. Uh, you might love him. Uh, introduce yourself, good sir. That's you, Hunter. Oh, that me? Oh, hello. Uh, Hunter here. Hello, everyone. Hello, internet. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. And uh, a, a new companion to this show we have here. Uh, you, you might know him. You probably love him. He lives in Canada. Uh, you know him as... What's your name? Hey, this is Bradley up in the true north. It's uh, Bradley. Land Bradley of, of maple syrup Martin. and honeys. Yeah. Maple syrup, uh, trees, snow. Oh, I guess you guys all know about that now. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah Texas. Oh, was. oh, oh. <laughs> we're, 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 we're doing that now. That, that's what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm really glad we get, get get you all together here. We're going to talk about um, BVS, Batman vs. Superman, uh, the red capes are coming, all that good shit. Let me just go ahead and do a little plot uh. summary <laughs> of this goddamn movie here. Um, okay, so um, Zack Snyder wanted to make a Batman movie, and they said, well, you should sprinkle some Superman in there. And so he did, but then Zack Snyder being Zack Snyder, he's like, well... Can I kill Superman? And DC was like, Yeah, sure, whatever. I don't, I don't give a shit. And that's BVS. <laughs> How'd I do, guys? Nailed it. Uh, well, the problem is you didn't. The one thing you didn't mention, you're, we didn't watch BVS. We watched the Ultimate Edition. Oh my this God. is Snyder's quote true vision quote unquote. And if the if his Justice League is anything like this movie, then. Holy balls, we are in for four hours of not fun. Well, well we we watched is, yeah. we watched the, the three hour version of this movie. Um Bradley, uh, what version of this film did you watch? <laughs> I've only watched and seen the theatrical release, so I missed out on a lot of slower motion, I believe, I researched that there was even slower slow motion in the ultimate release. Oh, there's a lot more. <laughs> a lot of walking down hallways with exposition I've heard I've, I've missed. Uh, at one point, I believe there was a scene in which uh, Lex Luthor, Jesse Lex, makes the peach tea and we see Dong and he's pissing into the, the pitcher. <laughs> no, no, we don't get that. There is no Dong. Sally no. The Eisenberg name is App. I <laughs> So Bradley and I, for like the last month or so, have been to, like in, in this chat we're part of Doggett Two, have been going back and forth on Snyder, and I've actually defended Man of Steel to a point. It's not a perfect movie. I think it's a good. Well, film. yeah, it's your favorite movie this of the decade, is right? What I, I you can shut up right now. That is not true. But this was what I was afraid Man of Steel was gonna be. Like this is just mm. a giant disappointment, and considering. You have a chance to have Batman and and Ben Affleck. Say what you will about the guy. This he is acting his ass. He's trying so hard to turn chicken shit into chicken salad. And there's a couple points where I went, or, or sorry, turned guano into a bat. And there you go, that's better. But but he but there's a couple scenes where I went. This actually works. Him and Jeremy Irons have really good chemistry as Bruce Wayne and Alfred, but. It's really everything else about this movie that just does not work. And it's quickly, it's very apparent very quickly that this won't be a good film, but it's almost impressive how bad it gets. Well, it's everything about this film that doesn't involve the main title that's not that good. If this had stuck as Batman vs. Superman, maybe I would have enjoyed it more. Maybe we could have tackled the themes of what something like that means, you know. Uh, ultra powerful, but a uh, poor kid who lived in Kansas versus uh, regular human. I mean, fuck, I'm as regular of a human as Bruce Wayne ever is. 
a billionaire who who right, uh, yeah. who who brands people in this film. Now, now in the in the uncut version, do they say that he does that on purpose to make sure people get killed, or it's just Lex takes advantage of that and kills people? What's the motivation behind that? Does he like the smell of it, and he doesn't want to tell Alfred that he's got a little fetish in his old age? Like, what's the deal with? He the brand? saves it for the despicable people. I, they're all despicable. They're Gotham criminals. I mean, you're not. Um, wrong. We, we we work on American <laughs> rules. There's despicable people, and then there's sex traffickers, and then we want to you know set those guys on fire. That's how America works. We're we're a bloodthirsty why, society. Why was Zack Snyder afraid to have Batman beat the shit out of someone who just mugged someone else? Because that's where Batman seems cruel. When this movie has Clark saying, you know, Clark's all like, this man is cruel. This man is evil, Director Perry. This man is beating the shit out of sex trafficking child molesters. And I'm like, that's good, Clark. That is a yeah. good thing. The Daily Planet isn't going to endorse play your tiny violins for pedophiles piece, you psycho. Yeah, it's not Fox News. Like, come on. <laughs> it's Daily Planet, damn it. <laughs> Batman exposes Jeffrey Epstein. What a jerk. <laughs> I mean, so okay, so let, let let's let's kind of take each piece uh, of the film. So you talked about Affleck real quick. I think Affleck is the closest thing to Batman the animated series Batman we've had in live action. Not just down to his look, but this is a obviously more ramped up version because it's more of a quote adult unquote film. But as far as being the closest in live action, I think it's Affleck. Um, Irons is uh, Jeremy Irons is Alfred. He, the reason why Alfred has always been so important to Batman canon, especially in the comics, is because if Robin's not around, he really is the conscience of the Bat family overall. And so him checking Bruce allows a little bit of humanity for him. I mean, there's a couple jokes where, uh, you know, that uh, Alfred even talks about like, oh, the, the Wayne family name will most likely end with you because you know all you do is punch criminals and never you know get laid but there is a woman in his bed <laughs> at a point that i went oh that bruce wayne fucks good for you uh it looked but, like he was contemplating making her breakfast as well right yeah i was like wow you actually didn't kick like, you would think bruce wayne would just have a trap door at this point just like all right cool that was fun <laughs> yep. i'd you know what i, I support I a batman who gets bench. prostitutes no one gets hurt <laughs> <laughs> he is the most emotionally unavailable and that is, as sad as it is to say, actually very accurate to the cartoon, uh, the animated series Batman. You don't notice it as a kid, but as an adult, when you watch that series, it's like, damn, Bruce, give someone a hug. You're so sad and lonely. And ben Affleck smiling. does carry that. Bruce that, Wayne's uh, always smiling, but he always looks so sad. Just like this yeah. movie. Yeah. Is, it's, ben, it's, it's okay, a great is Bruce tomorrow. Wayne sad in this movie, or is Ben Affleck just sad in this movie? I both? Could yeah. Yeah. I, I think both, honestly. Like, it's a little frustrating though because Affleck is so good. He does a great job of carrying, I believe, the pain. The problem is the source of said pain because he has a big axe to grind with Superman, made by Henry Cavill. And I stand by it. I think Cavill is a good Superman who's gotten some just dog shit material. But this movie, he, it's. <sighs> It's rough to watch him in this. Like, Affleck is, like, the scene where they're at the party together, you can almost hear Affleck going, act, motherfucker, act, carry your fucking weight. Like, you can hear Affleck as you stare at him, go, try harder. And, and, and Cavill just, he can't get on Affleck's level, and I and I get that, but it's it's hard to watch Cavill's performance. You know what it reminded me all of? All the stuff I like. It kind of reminded me of um, Marlon Wayne's audition to play Richard Pryor where he's like he's bouncing off omar epps and like he's giving it his all he's trying yeah. he's like i'm an actor right now watch me act like richard, richard Pryor. and omar epps is just sitting down all calm and chill and oozing all this acting charisma without even trying that was ben affleck in this yeah. movie while henry cavill's <laughs> like okay american accent american accent is activated and it's like, there's just something about these actors when they gotta do the <laughs> accent, it's like they lose 50 points in, like, acting. The thing that sucks about Superman is that Superman's not a hard character to write. Like, basically, think Captain America except he fucking flies and, like, there's no shield. Like, like Ralph really, uh, not Ralph, sorry, Cavill really should be that to DC what Evans was to Marvel. Like, it, he, he really should be. And yet, there just isn't the interest in Superman, I don't think, anymore. He 
because I don't think people know how to write Superman anymore. Um, and this movie really exposes that. Uh, Amy Adams, God bless her, one of the best actresses we have working today. They have nothing for her for Lois Lane. Absolutely nothing. Like, she's, she's either the shittiest reporter ever, or she's the most reckless reporter ever. And she should have been killed a dozen times in this movie, <laughs> at least. And, like, and I'm probably being, like, I'm probably low-balling it, but there's that scene near the end of the movie where she throws the kryptonite spear in the water and like in this like sinking pool because the buildings are coming down and then it's like oh hey doomsday we need the spear to kill her to kill it oh shit let me go ahead and keep my heavy ass work clothes on but jump in the water like i know she can't go naked so before anyone says that shut up i get that uh, but she was naked at the beginning true but i mean you would think you would take off like your jacket like something to not weigh you down so much because so when she almost drowns it's like well it's a good thing superman has super hearing but i will say clark is a worse reporter <laughs> i could prove that with one scene okay clark yeah. kent who grew up what did they establish eyesight away from gotham city yes and lived in a world where tvs worked and tvs were on mm -hmm. became a journalist for the Daily Planet for a couple years. Uh, what, what do they say? Two or three years? Two years. Yeah. Is a journalist and he says, hey, who's that? When he sees Bruce Wayne. That is a shit reporter. <laughs> yeah, when... So... It... To the most polite... <laughs> no, the most polite guy he says it to, too. Because if I would have... <laughs> I, I would have been there, even me, and someone said, hey, who's that? And was a reporter... Asking about who's that, and that is Bruce Wayne. I'd have said, "What are you stupid? Not what is this your first day or something?" I would have mocked him like, "You don't know who that is. What, what is this? Who are you?" But nope, he gets a pass, I guess. I thought you're gonna say when uh, Lars Fishburne handed him like a pretty easy assignment, and Clark Kent was like, "Nah, boss. <laughs> yeah. This this is what I think we should cover. This is how you should run your business." I would have fired his yeah, ass. Yeah, and pretty stupid yeah, right and Perry's like it's just sports and not not even that it's just sports there, it takes a lot of charisma to write a sports column and a lot of uh, really does, poetic like energy that. I'll say and I'm not kidding I see why he avoided it then but for Clark to be like no no Perry I want to write about how Batman's mean to disgusting criminals who should rot in jail hey Bradley is there anything you like about BBS sure sure uh, <laughs> oh no I'm on a spot um, I like Michael Shannon's corpse performance. That's really him, and he really does look like a corpse. That's pretty yes. cool. Yeah. yeah. I really liked the Duster Batman outfit. That'd be a kick-ass action figure. I can't find one. I guess they don't make them. But I really actually do unironically love that design. Um, oh, Gal Gadot's performance with Ben Affleck when they're just kind of, you know, charming each other at the party. I like five minutes into that, I'm like, can these two be in a heist movie? Because they are killing this. This is awesome to see. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Those are good things. Is that, <laughs> is that just pure actor charisma, or can Zack Snyder get some points on these actors being good actors in his film? I mean, he's a director. So. Yeah, the direction he wants, I think he always achieves. Like, we may be all like, why is Batman or why is Superman sound like he's bored out of his mind and wishes that death would come and release him from his monotonous existence i think Zack snyder's like yes that's what i'm going for thank you because henry cavill i've seen laugh and smile in other films it looks genuine i think he's being directed to be this broody and emo for whatever reason you know oh and yeah like i said before mm -hmm. no you said before some things yeah like i do think and admire that zach was willing to double down on his vision of Everyone sucks, everyone is terrible, and no one deserves to live in a world with Superman. I think that's a horrible message, but he did stay true to it, so props to that. Not many people could after the backlash he got from Man of Steel. The, the beginning of this movie, um, it's, you know, it's the best bit. Zach's, it's, it's, it's Batman, sorry, Bruce Wayne, seeing his, his buildings being leveled, and him just running into the debris. 
no costume, just him. His buildings. That's yes. gross. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, come on, he tried. Is this Bruce Wayne or Lex Luthor? Who is it? Because he acts like Lex Luthor. <laughs> okay, but seriously, though, you guys, uh, give me some things that um, keep you awake at night in regards to this movie. Okay, all right, I'm going to rattle some off. One, um, first off, um, the destruction of Metropolis. Uh, so first off, they never established that there is any sort of Wayne Enterprises in Metropolis. So when his building is being leveled, I was like, really? You couldn't have thrown this in the Man of Steel, like shown the Wayne logo on the side of the building so that there'd be some context for the opening of BVS? Because, yeah, they just go, yep, there's this has been here the whole time. Well, you didn't show that. Shut up. Uh, so there's that. Uh, two... When Superman goes to this U.S. Senate hearing and this bomb goes off, first off, the guy that ends up losing his legs because of the attack uh, of Zod and Superman, their big brawl, um, he is in this wheelchair that's made of lead. And so how Lex knew that Superman can't see through things that are lead, that is never established or explained whatsoever. And it's a really important thing for the plot that actually drives the plot forward, one. Uh, another thing, the whole uh, terrorist plot at the beginning of this movie makes so little fucking sense. There's really no reason for Lois to be there at all. And the guy she teams up with, Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy fucking Olsen is in this movie and he's killed off within the first 15 minutes. One of Superman's most important relationships in his canon, just off the map like that. I'm like, all right, so why the fuck are you even having Superman in this? Um, I won't even get into the Martha shit. I'll save that for someone else. But Lex Luthor <laughs> knows everything, apparently. Apparently, he is just omnipotent and can read minds, too, because he knows who Clark, he knows Clark Kent is Superman. Again, never explained. He knows that, oh, guess what? Uh, he knows that Batman is Bruce Wayne, too, because they established that at the end of the movie, which, again, never comes into play how he knows that. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg feels like he's playing the Riddler more than he's playing Lex Luthor. Oh, okay, he's so Hunter, Hunter, give, give, some, give some for the rest of us. God damn. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, all right, we, finish it, we just finished the last point. You asked. He gets, uh, he has this weird relationship with his dad so like he was abused by his father but his dad started the company which isn't how it is in the comics if memory serves so why even have that plot point that never resolved itself it's supposed to maybe give Lex sympathy but it really doesn't okay I'm done go ahead <laughs> uh, uh, god damn it's like asking somebody how their day was and they just they just go on <laughs> <laughs> Riley, Riley, what, what, what keeps you up at night well you know I think that's a lot of bases covered the senate hearing not actually getting to hear what sort of trial superman was supposed to have that was the biggest disappointment for me and i know we're supposed to long for the punching and the explosions and everyone being loud but i actually wanted to see henry cavill defend himself and his actions to the u.s government of all things especially seeing as how he doesn't have to do that He's a world hero. He's not a government lapdog, which I think is how Zack Snyder and a lot of comic creators see him sometimes. Frank Miller, I know, I think sees Superman as that. So I miss the trial. The Jesse Eisenberg thing, everything about him, it's absurd. I do like that at least it's a fun impression like, oh, here, here comes Clark Kent. How are you? Oh, and it's Bruce Wayne. I love to introduce people. Did you guys know I invented the Facebook? Like, it's, it's a fun <laughs> performance, so I don't think it's as cringe and awful as everyone says just because at least it's silly enough to be entertaining I don't get what the point is about Bruce planning a first degree murder against a guy that might commit a crime maybe if he feels like it I mean I hate to tell this to, to listeners but that's everyone everyone <laughs> is capable of committing a crime if they choose to Yep. and Bruce Wayne that. is supposed to be the smartest man the smartest detective we're supposed to believe is empowered to feel that means he should murder people i don't yeah. get it man that that bothers me a lot which, which the line where he tells alfred if we think there's even one percent chance that he's our enemy we must act with like certainty or something to that effect you and then you have the joker and the suicide squad in the next movie yeah 
if you apply that logic <laughs> to Batman, he should have no rogues. Personally, yeah, exactly. for me, what drove me off the wall was the um, five-minute fight between the two heroes in a movie called Batman vs. Superman in a three-hour movie. I I will... Oh, was, was there two heroes in this movie? Who were they? <laughs> <laughs> on my deathbed. On my deathbed. I am gonna be I am gonna be complaining about this for the rest of my life. Batman versus Superman. A fucking Pacquiao versus Mayweather was a better fight than this. I I was so upset. <laughs> I got my money's worth at, at that more than this. Uh I I, I don't even want to talk about this wow. anymore. Okay, next subject. So, you know, we're, we're talking about the Snyder Cut eventually. So, um, guys, how, how well, how, how well, how well does this pave the road to, to the Snyder Cut? Like, the, putting the bricks together, laying down the cement, like, like, how good is this as far as laying down a foundation towards that movie, towards that, you know, whatever the fuck that is? I don't have a comment. I suppose if he stays the course, it'll be fine. If people enjoyed this, they should enjoy the Snyder Cut. I think the Justice League is supposed to be inspirational, hopeful, and the peak of mankind's heroics to help show empathy, compassion, and service to each other. That's not going to be the Justice League in the Snyder Cut based on this movie. And that's it. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Give me your answer, Hunter. Okay, give me a second here. Um, yeah, I'm concerned. Like, I'm... So, first off, three hours. This is three fucking hours. And you get a five-minute Superman-Batman fight, which is absurd. It, this should have been the length of the uh, airport, like, similar to the airport scene in Civil War. Like, this should have been a knockdown, drag out. If you're gonna put, if you're gonna put your marketing as Batman versus Superman, this, this was a light skirmish at best. Not even a fight like this, misleading as like misleading like a motherfucker. This was um, like a meetup confrontation. I'm concerned you about doing a movie before you do the team up, like like when like in Avengers when they. This is like as long as that first Avengers meetup where they're all fighting in the forest. Oh, between uh, Thor and yeah. Cap with Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, that was and, a more creative dynamic fight as well. You um. But yeah, I'm worried about this. Um, my big problem with DC, and I've said it since Man of Steel came out, when you make everyone dark, Super Batman stands out even less, and the flaws of the character stand out more. One of the best ongoing jokes in Justice League Unlimited is how, seriously, Batman takes every fucking thing. How even Martian Manhunter at points is like, dude, like, chill the fuck out. Like, it's okay. <laughs> like, like, but that's a great ongoing joke in the cartoons and in the comics, too. So I don't understand why you make every character so tortured in the way that Batman is. Uh, it, it, it really doesn't make sense. And if you're doing that for characters like The Flash and Cyborg, like, these characters who are supposed to be lighter. I mean, who can still kick ass, but still be lighter in their, like, demeanor and everything it makes the characters feel less special and it shows you don't get the characters and i think unfortunately that's where we're headed with this upcoming um uh just zack snyder's justice league so i'm not looking forward to it i'm very concerned i'm hopeful uh is what i got to say you know you got you got you got to pray i hope i get my 15 dollars worth you know i i don't know i'm look I'm just hoping there's more good stuff than bullshit. And with a Zack Snyder film, we're rolling the dice. But let's go on to the next topic. So, uh, let's skip that, let's skip that. Okay, so guys, come on. Zack Snyder directed this. What's it, you know, what's his yep. what's his stamp on this as the director? What what makes you know this is a Zack Snyder film? And you know, what, what, what can we actually purely in this film give him credit for? Something that you saw in here is like, yeah, that's completely Zack Snyder, and I actually really enjoy that. That's completely Zack Snyder, and I actually enjoyed that? Yes. Those have to be, like, mutual? <laughs> yes. Or, or so, you know, it doesn't um, have to be mutual. I don't enjoy all the slow motion. I don't think his slow motion has worked since 300. I think it only worked in 300 because it had more than one color, shade, 
and the tone and artistry of killing was what a Spartan's life was about, so they complimented each other. Uh, walking slowly down a hallway with a briefcase. <sighs> that's terrible. I hate what? that, but that's Zack Snyder. Um, wasn't the song Hallelujah in this somewhere? That's Zack Snyder. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to steal Hunter's Dancer really quick. Um, I'll never take this away from Zack Snyder because it's always true. Maybe not so much in Man of Steel, but you know, you saw glimpses of that. Um, Zack Snyder knows how to shoot an action scene, or at least a fight scene. Like, if you're not thinking about the lives that are lost, like, that's a... He, Zack Snyder, the, the warehouse <laughs> fights, even like the Batman or Superman fights, maybe the pacing could have been faster, but I did like like the overall choreography of it. You know, seeing Batman, like, he's not just pounding at Superman, like, he's doing like some actual moves on, you know, the fucking man, the, the god on Earth. So, you know, that's kind of something for Zack Snyder. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to see Superman pan on Batman, you can go on Pornhub. Um, I got, I thought I'd stand hey, by the hey, lights hey, hey. comment on. So there is a shot in this movie that is so Zack Snyder. It's where Batman lights, uh, uh, turns on the bat signal and he's waiting for Superman and Superman's like in the sky looking down at him. And it's such a, it's such a, 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 a Zack Snyder shot. Like it's a, it's a beautiful shot. That That's the thing. I, I think people forget about my criticism of Snyder. I've never said that his stuff isn't pretty, but Pretty's not enough. Like you need to bring some substance to this shit. And but that shot in particular is just—it's one of my favorite shots, if not my favorite shot in the film. Um, also, the warehouse fight as you rob dog it—that is a incredible. I, I think that's the best directed scene that he's done in a superhero film, specifically a superhero film. I love that action fight. I I, I love that warehouse scene. It's so well done. Zack Snyder really likes killing people of color in his movies. Like they just they just blow up and he oh, really does. My God, I do, I never want to be in a Zack Snyder film. Like, I don't want to know what he'll do to me. Like in the film, I'm sure in real life he's pretty yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah, but just, like in the film, he's gonna destroy that me. That warehouse scene, the warehouse right. scene in the Batmobile chase happens, and Bruce is lecturing Clark about collateral damage. <laughs> hey, he only that killed twenty the people. Part I forgot about. <laughs> So I had to laugh because I was thinking about Bradley at this part. I forgot in the warehouse scene when he gets that crate and uses the uh, like the, uh, the grappling hook to kind of like throw it. He throws the crate, goes flying, hits this guy in the face. You see blood on the back of the wall because his head hits so hard. I'm like, oh, so he's dead. <laughs> like, that's he's for whole, sure dead. That's like, brain matter on that wall. Yeah, I was like, oh, my God. Like, that's fucking brutal. And now nah, he'll walk it off. Yeah, it, it's. I, yeah, right. Like, there, there's this scene in to, to Bradley's point with the Batmobile chase where he flat out jumps through this truck and clearly just rams through at least five men who are in that truck and just kills them. Like, the Batmobile just cuts through them like butter. And- Bradley, you didn't watch the director's cut. There's actually a scene where, like, they show all the victims of that acting scene. And it's just, you know, they're in, like, cast and, like, wheelchairs. Like, they got the arm slings. They're fine. You can see their parachutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a joke for kids from the 90s. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, you know, I will give credit to Zack Snyder. I always say this in the chat, but I'll say it now more than anything. You know, no BBS, no Zack Snyder, you know, no Wonder Woman. Say what you will. Like, Zack Snyder has a vision. Maybe he's not great all the time, but... He makes a call, and sometimes it's not a bad one. And I really enjoy Gal Gadot. I, I don't know if he casted her or anything, but she's in his movie. That's her. That's her introduction into the DC EU, and it's not a bad one. She's actually probably the one of the better characters of this film. It's a good score too. Actually, the whole film and most Zack Snyder's films, I'll say, they're always scored very well. Some of the music cues are a little. <laughs> Laughable. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. But okay. the score is always a lot of fun and honestly matches a more inspiring tone that the story is telling. And that's, yeah, and that's actually a, another issue. So, whenever, so, first off, Wonder Woman does not need to be in this movie. Let's make that very clear. There's really not a big reason for her to be in this, but they make it work. Um, it's. <laughs> Anytime Gal's hair is even in a shot, you hear that. Dun, 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 dun. I'm like, okay, he's up. Like, I like that so much, like, though. We know it's Wonder Woman. 
I like the that. The most scene, problematic though. thing about Wonder Woman being in this is she could have kicked Doomsday's ass herself. She I, ooh, need Bruce thank you so much, Bradley, for, for reminding me. Thank you so much. Why is Superman the one carrying the spear when you have an Amazonian thank warrior you. right there? Thank you. <laughs> like, it, so, not to piggyback off of that, there's the point. So, I don't get why she even has a shield. Because when Doomsday has the laser eyes and she's about he's about to turn uh, Bruce into a Batman kebab, she just has her uh, her bracelets uh, her her uh, gauntlets just crossed like this. She doesn't need and the shield on her back. I was like, so you clearly don't need the shield apparently because <laughs> the gauntlets can just absorb this. Zack Snyder already established that, that cool. Superman was not going to be their Captain America, so by default, Wonder Woman it has to be their Captain America character, and a Captain America think, a Captain America character needs a shield. I mean, I mean that that is true. Captain America character needs a shield, but why not have the guy who's basically so American he's damn near an apple pie? And like, go ahead, like lean into that with Superman. But oh my gosh, but an but Amazonian Dooms- warrior with the with the kryptonite spear that is so hot and so awesome, and I, we missed it. It's a missed opportunity. <laughs> it really is. But but Doomsday, there's no teamwork. Doomsday. Whoever did the, the design on Doomsday should be fucking ashamed of themselves because that is not <laughs> Doomsday. That is a ninja. That is one. That is the Jerry's kids of Doomsday. It looks like a Damn. ninja fucking turtle. It is a terrible, <laughs> terrible design. And so for those people who will go, well, it had the spikes. Really? Well, That's all. Okay. <laughs> Jesse, uh, I'm sorry. Lex is all like, behold, and here are Doomsday. I mean, he says the name, but it's a Zod zombie, right? It's not even yeah. really canonical to the comics Doomsday caricature, Correct. I'll just say. Because okay. the original Doomsday comes from space. Right. It's just a name drop. I don't I don't think it was ever supposed to be Doomsday. It, it does set it up for when they do the comic accurate Doomsday uh, film starring Ryan Reynolds. Like, I can't wait for that. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, that would be. But, <laughs> but Doomsday... Doomsday being in this would be like Thanos being the first Avengers. Like, why are you going with that big of a villain, like, this quickly in the game? It's the second fucking Superman film. Why are you going Doomsday this quickly? Well, like, Doomsday's already broken because Doomsday pushes Clark to a point where he feels convicted to actually kill something. And it's heartbreaking to read that, especially I was just a kid when that happened. Clark has already killed lots of things in the uh, Snyder verse. So what Thank did you, you Bradley? Yeah, does he? Yeah. Does what he? Is he okay, he killed Zod. He kills that one black guy in the beginning yes. of this movie, um, and uh, he kills Zod again. So he's two. He's got two bodies. What? He could have just lasered the guy's gun with his eyes when he was pointing yeah. at that Lois. He didn't need to make a pancake out of him into that wall. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> Superman does nothing creative with his powers. That's another thing I'm I'm upset about. Because there's so much creativity you can Goddamn do. Goddamn nerds, with these no freeze breath for you guys. No freeze breath. Why? <laughs> Which I was sitting there thinking freeze the gun like, or melt the gun. <laughs> like he does that in the fucking radio show. Or <laughs> add amazing. add this add the sound effect that's just add that sound effect and have suddenly Superman holding this guy up by the wrist and staring down at him like mm-mm. No guns, sir. And have the guy be terrified. Superman can be scary without him murdering everybody. How do these Zack Snyder scenes play now that we've seen the boys and we've seen A-Train smash through a person and Homelander laser every single person <laughs> he can? Like, right. how, how... I think Homelander's a more well-adjusted Kal-El, Zack Snyder <laughs> Kal-El, actually. Oh, God, you might be right on that. Oh, that makes me so sad. <laughs> like, but... The, 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 this is the last quick thing on Doomsday. It, so, Lex. So, first off, quick, uh, quick, uh, fun, fun fact here. So, apparently, the ship that uh, Lex has. Because my first question was, why does he have a ship? Uh, the the ship, uh, Cal's ship, is back on the fucking farm. What ship is this? Apparently, the open pod in Man of Steel is supposed to represent uh, uh, Kara, uh, his. Uh, you know, super um, Yeah. Yeah. Cause, so my question is for the ultimate edition, you couldn't name drop her. No one could go, hmm, this is your sh-. Like, it makes no sense that Lex just has this ship that's just there. Which, by the way, the ship even goes, hey, we can't use Zod's body and create something. 
Well, why not? Oh, the Accords of Krypton or something like that. Or the Council of Krypton. Oh, yeah. where's the Council? Oh, they're not around anymore. Cool. Make my thing. Okay. I'm like, the ship is just like, sure. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really so bad. <laughs> This is just one more thing that confused me. Superman's a corpse. The government shows up. They're like, okay, he's ours. We're claiming this corpse. And Batman and Gal Gadot pose for the Jesus painting it is taking from. But then we see that Clark is buried on the farm. Like, what's in Superman's tomb? Yesterday's garbage? Like, what? <laughs> How did the body make it back to the, the, the statue tents? that got destroyed? Oh, that would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> just, throw, just throw the head in there. It's fine. <laughs> Let's not check the casket. It's fine. Like, <laughs> Scout's put, honor, right? They put dooms in there. Of tax dollars, maybe even millions <laughs> on a monument that isn't a monument at all. That's now, Bradley, for my specific taste and rating system, I don't really need a number score. I just need you to um, tell me a DCEU movie that you think was better than... That, that you personally like better than this and one that you personally dislike more than this i'll let uh, hunter go first to give you okay. to show you the way i would watch every single dceu film over this um this movie is one of my least favorite theater experiences ever i left the theater angry and pissed off and really questioning dc as a brand um i've watched the movie three times because i was like i want to make sure that i hate it as much as i do and i i i fucking despise this movie um <laughs> yeah every single dc film i would watch over yes even suicide squad because i actually think will smith and margot robbie and uh, viola davis are all better than the top acting performances that are in this film um yeah yeah every single dc you film over there damn Oof. wow what, what what do you like more? Well, or is this bottom? Is this the bottom? Is this the bottom? <laughs> you say, I'm here at the bottom, Dad. Don't you want to see what I see? You had Hunter. He likes Joker more than this. I I own Joker. I think Joker's a great. Is actually yeah, a I really think good Joker's movie. better than this. That's easy. Yeah. That's, yes. I, I'd like to find out who doesn't. What's what's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, it's an Oscar-winning performance. I mean, <laughs> come yeah. on, Bradley. Give me show me what you got. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I watch superhero movies to be inspired. The only inspiring thing in this movie is when a man, crippled from the waist down, strong arms it up a statue and paints something. That's fucking inspiring. I can't believe he was able to do that. And Superman's in this movie, and it's embarrassing. I don't want to say this is the bottom, but... <laughs> oh, is it? Is the I'm kind of conflicted. I really like the character of Superman and I didn't care for Man of Steel. That hurt me a little more because of the wacky Kent. You know, as a father, I think Kent's a very inspirational character, so that sucked for me. I'll say Man of Steel is worse and uh, Wonder Woman is better than this. I'll even say Shazam's actually way better than this. And that's I love Shazam. And that has elements that are for the kids that, you know, the Snyderverse hates so much. But yeah, I'll go with Shazam. Go watch Shazam instead. Let's get Shazam in a JL movie. Maybe get some... Not even, you don't even have to have jokes. Just get someone you like and want to root for in a Justice League movie. Agreed. Yes. And as for me, I would say I think I prefer Justice League more than this movie. The the the, the little Frankenstein monster of a film. I enjoy that more than this, probably. And Same. what do I like uh, less than this? Um, hmm... Oh, that's easy. Man of Steel. Like I said, like I said yesterday, uh, I prefer this over Man of Steel. And I said I was going to explain myself, and I lied. Uh, I'm not going to explain myself. Uh, eat shit. Uh, that's my thoughts. Wow. So I think you're incredibly wrong because uh, I think Man of Steel is better. But this had better fights. If you've listened. Uh, uh, mm, yes. Like the, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, give that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Furiosa? No, not Furiosa. Farrah Zora? What's her name? She's oh, yeah, yeah. I think cool. they both had but, equally good um, beginnings, and it's just, okay, Man of Steel has a better third than, a, a better last third than this movie does, by far, obviously. Uh, and I think there's a big debate on if what the middle parts are better. <laughs> so, you know. I what do you want from there me? There is. A I, debate on that. So... The only reason the Man of Steel third act is better than this is because it doesn't end with Superman dying, which second film to kill Superman, like, really? 
hasn't even established himself it's canon. yet. Why are you going to kill him off? Who's going to miss him? It's not canon. That's 60 years of build-up yeah, that moment. seriously. Now. That's why it was such a big deal when they killed Superman. <laughs> Don't nobody got time, time for that. Everyone's like... Huh? I mean, Lois barely even knew who he was at this point. <laughs> it, the movie includes a time jump, by the way, so we're just supposed to go, oh, they're in love now. <laughs> hey. Yeah. What you... kind of idiot gets in a bathtub with jeans <laughs> on? Those aren't coming off now, you idiot. It's so wasteful. All that water. You could have flown falling. her to the. You could have grabbed her and flown her to the bed. She probably would have dried off just because of the speed. <laughs> right? Hey! <-o>. Right? <laughs> I gotta say, you know, he uh, needs it's really. To be more intimate with her, and Zach hates intimacy. It's pretty refreshing. <laughs> Zack Snyder is way more about uh, showing off all the males' abs way more than any females. Like, Gal Gadot is very beautiful, but she's shot very tastefully. Like, she's never, like, overly sexualized like Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill are in this movie. Like, they're just abs and peck shots yeah. all over. Wait, all we... over, yeah, that CrossFit sequence. Right, <laughs> right. I'm going to close on this. The Lois, Lois and Clark dynamic is Lois loves Clark. Clark loves Lois. Clark loves to save people. When he, in this movie, says, Oh, you're my world. Like, shut up. That's so stupid. It, the yeah. best of Superman, the best of Clark Kent, is when he knows in an issue you should all read that he's going to be dead soon. And he hears someone in trouble and is about to leave. And Lois says, don't. Stay here. Stay with me. And this freaking hero says, the work doesn't stop because I'm dying, Lois. That's yep. a freaking hero. Now, yep. Bradley. This, you're my world, Lois. <laughs> Bradley, I hear you. But in the very first that. Superman movie, in the very first Superman movie, does, does Superman not travel back in time just to save Lois Lane? He might have done that on an, by accident. That might have been by accident. <laughs> and doesn't he just he leave like, other people to die? And it's absurd when he does that. That is an absurd sequence. Canon. Yeah, Canon. It, it, it really is. If, if that is the most <laughs> freaking this this Clark won't even this Clark won't even toss a nerd into space to save his mom. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll he'll show up in the blink of an eye to catch Lois in midair while she's falling. It's it's a weird. How many times does Superman save Lois' life in yeah. this movie? At, At least three four, times, right? Three or four. Three or four. Yeah. He murders, murders a foreigner. Okay, Superman. Okay, okay. Her from the sky. It, okay, this movie. Drowning. He saves her from drowning. <laughs> he saves one. Okay, we see when him save one boring. person after the building explosion, and then he saves some people during a flood. I think. Um. Does he? It looks like he's just floating above them. He's floating there, looking down at him like, ah, "Where's your boat?" <laughs> <laughs> Batman has okay. Batman has more bodies, but I think we also saw him actively save more people, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you're right. So that is the thing I will say too. That's like probably the biggest betrayal of Superman is after this bomb goes off at his meeting, the way he just looks around and goes, "All right, time for me to go," and just flies away. I was like, "You're, I was like, you're an <laughs> asshole." <laughs> like, you're Someone should. Someone should dub him him staring at Lois and saying, I'd call that a mistrial, and then have him try it. <laughs> like, honestly, Bradley, and you'll appreciate this, he should have pulled a poochie and been like, Krypton needs me. Just blow the fuck away. Okay, Krypton's, okay. Krypton's blown up, doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, okay, on that note, on that note, we're not gonna be, we're not gonna top that. Okay, uh, everybody, give me your outros. Hunter, let everybody know where they can find you. All right, yeah, you can find me on, uh, Facebook at my podcast, The Real Pineapple. Uh, I like that page as well as Real Pineapple Games. I'm going to start streaming here on Twitch at twitch.tv at the end of the month slash The Real Pineapple. And you can find me on Twitter at jhunter, Real Pineapple, the Real Pineapple, that's R E E L. And then listen to The Real Pineapple wherever you listen to podcast. Okay, Bradley, give me, give me the deets. Yeah, and uh, you can hear me over at the Screener Squad reviewing movies. A lot more tame. I don't know why Snyder films bring out the worst in me. I'm also on Twitter at Bradley of Martin. That's B R A D L Y O F M A R T I N. Whether you're pissed off at what I've said or curious about whatever, you know, drop me a line. I could talk about Superman for hours. It's, it's nuts. But thanks. Thanks for listening. And uh, you all know me. I'm Doggett. You can find me on oneofus.net. 
giving the straight to the real reviews. And you can find me on Mission Impossible, uh, annoying the hell out of Nathan. And, uh, you know, you can just find me online. Uh, you know, say hi. And thank you so much for joining us uh, next week. Okay, ne- the next episode is going to be uh, something special. You all should tune in for that. Uh, and uh, I don't have a tagline for the end. So, bye.